my guests will be sharing with us their perspective of what is what it's like growing up as a mixed race person in Kenya. People shout yellow yellow, brownie. They ask is she a muzungu or even when I was a news anchor some people in the office would just be like I'm mm, a was pointy. But no, I put a lot of hard work. You don't know how much I work hard even more than the other person. When you go somewhere, no initially start speaking to you in Swahili. Well, Everyone they assume. assume and they put on a wang yeah. to accommodate you. Yeah. Then you just respond in Swahili to show them I can actually speak Swahili mm -hmm. and there's no need for you to struggle or to strain in order to accommodate me or something. Hello, I am Tamima and welcome to the Real Talk Round Table. Now, in recent years in Kenya, there has been a dynamic shift in attitudes towards mixed race relationships. And usually, children are a byproduct of such unions. Today on the Round Table, my guests will be sharing with us their perspective of what, is, what it's like growing up as a mixed race person in Kenya. Welcome to Real Talk. Welcome to the table, girls. Thank you. So, I'm going to start over there. I have some. Yep. Mkorote Mackenzie. Yeah, Mkorote. Did I say that right? Kirote. Kerote. <laughs> That's close enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go with Sam. Sam. Okay. Just call and, then Sam. and then here we have Sabina, Sabina Stadler. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, I have Aisha Weda. Yeah. Okay. And as my viewers can see, you are all mixed race. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just to contextualize the discussion that we are having here today, because we just did the census. And I'm pretty certain that each of you participated. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm very curious, when it came to your ethnicity, did you feel represented in that process? Let me start with you, Sam. Uh, well, I think uh, this time as well as last time, I always, they give you the option to just say Kenyan. Mm -hmm. And I always just say Kenyan. What yeah. about you, Sabina? Yeah, the same for me. The, I'm just Kenyan. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's why they came to count me. <laughs> yeah, so I just said Kenyan. And what about you? Same here. Aisha. Yeah. Because mm. okay. I've been growing up in Kenya and all that, so I'm Kenyan. Mm. And yeah. so obviously from a nationali nationality point of view, you're Kenyan. Then there was that one question which people either chose to answer or not. Yeah. Which now came back to culture. Yeah. Mm. And I'm sure for you guys, growing up as mixed race, you're coming from two different sets of culture. Mm. So probably I'm going to start with you, Sam. Maybe just give us a bit of a context in terms of what your background is. Uh, okay. Um, uh, well, I was born in Kenya, but um, I spent the first seven years of my life in Uganda, where my parents were stationed. My father worked there. Um, and then my father left when I was seven with another woman and left me and my mum with nothing. So for the most part, I think that's why I feel primarily that I'm Kenyan is because my mother raised me alone and she's a Kenyan woman. Um, and then from seven, for the rest of up until now I've lived in for I lived in Kenya so I see myself as only Kenyan um, culturally um, it was difficult in some ways because I went to as you can tell from my British accent um, it was purchased because <laughs> I went to schools that um, had still had a British system and when I was starting boarding school at age six I was the only person of color in my class so you can imagine that where all the other people are white and you and all the teachers are white and you're the only person who is different so that as a younger child was a little bit different i remember trying to explain things like stockings around christmas to my mom and that sort of cultural confusion like me trying to be the like trying to fit in with the rest of the kids at school but being just a very kenyan family at home so culturally i think i sort of grew up in a little bit of a bubble until i was 21 and joined university of nairobi to study law and that was a completely different thing where i was the only person who was mixed race in a class full of black kenyans so it was sort of like a complete reversal of what you had experienced earlier yeah whereby before you were the only mixed race person yeah. in a classroom full of purely white people white people and then in the other context you were the only mixed race person in a yeah. classroom purely of yeah african people yeah. people of african descent well yeah mainly yeah mainly yeah. kenyans i mean there was a few Ugandans and tanzanians but yeah mainly like black people um and I, embarrassingly i did not speak swahili until i was 21 
which was because it wasn't actually taught as a second language when I was in primary school. And um, I wasn't really speaking it at home because I spent most of my time in boarding school. Okay, so let's hear from you, Sabina. Mm. So what is your background? Uh, for me, usually, uh, I think even I was with her here in the morning and someone was just talking to us. They didn't know that we were coming to do something about mixed race. And the first thing they asked us is, uh, when point you are in when mm, you point to that word pointing. You know, it's like mm. almost uh, if you meet someone the first time, if you're, let's say, black, I won't ask you, when you come you know, I will ask you maybe, oh, what do you do for a living? Tribe will be the last thing on my mind. So usually um, when people ask me that, I don't like to say, I just say I'm Kenyan because it's like we are coming back to the mindset of tribalism and you know how that can be in our country. But for you, it's race. Yeah, it's, it's race, but it's like asking me, what tribe am I? What tribe is your mother? What tribe is your father? Who is the white one? Who is the black one? You know. So usually, I just say yes. One of my parents is white. One is black. But that's it. You know. So culturally, like for me, I for me it was opposite. Um, I grew up, let's say in school. Most places it was like um, with black Africans. Yani <laughs> wakenya You know, like African. Is it African or black? Black skin. People. Yes, like say black skin. Kenyans. Yeah. yeah, the average Kenyan. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, it was like that, but then uh, I would go some other places and meet other mixed race people, maybe who are raised more like with the British accent, British school, and then so also I'm different from them. So mm -hmm. I can also feel we are quite different. Though uh, some other person will say, these guys are ah, wako pamoja, pamoja. And then you find the other person who now is like almost completely white, she doesn't eat even this Kenyan food. But for me, um, those people who I eat, my mrenda, my brown ugali, my fish. You know, I speak fluent Swahili. I was a Swahili news anchor at some point. So yeah, I think that's, everyone has a different experience. And what about for you, Aisha? Personally, because I grew up in learning in Kenyan schools, like I went to a public school in Kenya, so it was a bit different because everyone expected, oh, pointy when in Zungu, mm. like what are you doing here? So <laughs> were you the only one in your school who was mixed Not race? Actually, in my first school, Langatari Primary was, but then in Kilimani, it's more open, like it's more open. We have Indians, we have mm. Caucasians, as in it's more mixed. So it was a bit more comfortable. So you found people who looked like you. Yeah, but then they were, they had the accent, so <laughs> everyone was like, mm. Okay, so I'm realizing in this conversation, and probably there's a lot of judgment when it comes to this conversation we're having here, because you're using terms like black, white, Caucasian, African, whatnot. And you know, you might say one word and rub somebody the wrong way. And probably just to clarify, because we are talking about race here, and just in the spirit of trying to make this conversation be as easy as possible for everyone to understand. So we're going to go with the terms black and white. And then now we're going to stick, because you are Africans. And for me, when I'm saying uh, people, K Kenyan Africans in the context of that, I kind of feel like it's wrong because you're Africans, mm. irrespective of what the color of your skin is. Mm. We are all Africans. But now when it comes to probably now in terms of your biological makeup, that's when now we start having the conversation around the races. Mm. And it's very interesting because you've all had very different experiences. And for me, what I've caught on, and which is probably new, is that even amongst people of mixed races, there is also some sort of like discrimination that even amongst people who ideally should look like you, you still feel like, mm, because either she's too black or she's too white. So, and just to clarify, because does everyone on this table understand Kiswahili? That is a big point. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had an experience where people assume that, well, she doesn't speak Kiswahili. So they'll probably say snipey comments behind your back every time, every time mm, to yeah. date. Each and every day, where when you go somewhere, no one usually starts speaking to you in Swahili. Well, Everyone assume. assume. And they put on a wang yeah. to accommodate you. Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> then you just respond in Swahili to show them, I can actually speak Swahili. Mm -hmm. And there's no need for you to struggle or to strain in order to accommodate me or something. And there's no need for you to say things behind my back and I can actually understand you. Or you just respond back. Like if someone says something bad about you in Swahili, you just turn and you're like, Oh, Kweli. <laughs> <laughs> and what are their reactions? They must Which be like shocked. They just and keep quiet and turn away from you. And you go ahead with whatever you're supposed and to do. And what about you, Sam? Uh, um, yeah, well, I generally get passing comments a lot. Because you sound British, straight up. Yeah, I yeah. do. So people are generally like, where are you from? And I'm like, 
I know I'm really from Nairobi. I mean, where are you really from, Nairobi? I get, I get that. I get asked, what are you? And then generally when I'm walking, people shout yellow, yellow, brownie, wanjuku. And like, and they ask either in Kikuyu or in, Kiku, uh, or in Kiswahili, um, is she a Muzungu? Is she an Indian? The, I can just hear them as I'm talking. Um, and then there's even people like who I know who just shout at me like, hey, what's up, Muzungu? And I'm just like, what's up? Like, there's no point in like <laughs> fighting it. But I think the thing that I took away most from this first round is that the only thing we have in common is that we have brown skin. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, we are so different. Mm. And there's that's a lot of a, diversity. Well, yeah, because like, w like I have more in common with someone who is half Meru or and half anything else than I do with anybody here because you guys aren't Meru. So I think there's also something to do with positive ethnicity because I the reason I corrected my middle name which is Kirote is because I feel please say that again because Kirote. I feel like the Marys are like yay Mary sister up in there <laughs> Kirote Kirote the reason it's important to me is because there's a naming culture and system where I was named after my dad's mom by my my mom's mom and that name is means something. It means hardworking. Um, you know, it means it, it describes the traits of my dad's mum. And so that's why I think it's really important. So I don't think like ethnicity is a bad thing. I think it's used in a bad way to sometimes manipulate us as Kenyans. But I'm all about positive e ethnicity. And that's why as a grown up, um, when I was in primary school, I used to get teased about my middle name. But as a grown up, I really embrace my middle name and my culture and I it's very important to your personal identity yeah because I'm I'm I, you know if I if you just say my name Sam McKenzie I sound like I'm a white man <laughs> but so it's really important to include my middle name as part of that and but I do agree that I do just identify as Kenyan and as African and for me that means that you know if anything happens in Kenya like no one's gonna take me in just because I I had a white father. I don't have a white. I don't have a British passport. Like I'm in Kenya. I have nowhere to go. Yeah, you've gone to school here. You've worked here. Lived your entire life here. Oh, yeah, I've been paying taxes since I was 19. Like I'm as Kenyan as they get. You know, I'm Kenyan by you birth. Pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <That's really special. laughs> okay, right. Now remember here on the round table today we are talking about we are, actually we're talking about race. So this is a conversation about race, culture, and on the table I have beautiful young women who is just sharing with us their experiences of being a mixed race person in Kenya. Because the reality is that you and I do actually propagate some of the stereotypes that they have to face on a daily basis. Now, as always, I love hearing from you. Please get on that hashtag Real Talk with Tamima. Let me know what your views, comments, and feedback are on this topic. That's a conversation that we're having. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the round table. Now remember that get on that hashtag real talk with Tamima. Let me know what your views, comments are on this topic today. Now back to our earlier conversation. So I wanna find out. Now you Jina Yakimeru by the in I like just I just like you. I like how you say it. That's oh. why I wanna hear you say it. <laughs> but I wanna find out from you. So do you speak any Meru? Um very little. I know like a threat, Gakora, which means I'll beat you. I know so at, uh, Gakora. <laughs> Gakora. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know Tiga, which mm -hmm. means watch it. <laughs> and I know Mama Bobwega, which is sleep well. But you generally generally understand the language. Yeah, but it's also because the way my parents' generation speak. Meru there, it's always mixed with Swahili and English, you know, so I guess you I pick un up a few phrases, phrases and, a few and then you can piece together the conversation. But it's a huge regret of mine that I never learned. And it's so hard as an adult to pick it up, especially because in order to learn a language, you have to be around people who are speaking, speaking the it language. constantly. Yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. I, I mean, I hugely regret it. And I and that's why I work so hard on my Swahili. Like I'm constantly talking, constantly asking for corrections because it, I really feel like I, in a way, my education did me a disservice that I didn't 
or maybe my upbringing did me a disservice that mm. I didn't learn the, the national language properly. Okay. So what about you, Sabina? What's your experience with that? For me, Swahili is, in fact, my first language. <laughs> uh, and uh, the same thing, like Aisha said, sometimes you get the people who are like, Oh, Karibu Kenya, how are you finding it? I mean, welcome. <laughs> of course, they speak to you in English. So I'm like, you guy, you never watch Papa Shirandula. Like, really, I'm a Kenya, you know. But sometimes I'm just like, yeah. And, and also there's that thing where uh, they confuse you for another pointy. So somebody might think I'm Sam. Yeah. Or oh, they think you uh, all yeah, look alike. Yeah, we all look alike. It's like we are Chinese. Because me, there's a time, Kitambo uh, Sana, I was out and someone was talking to me. They bought me drinks. I'm like, yeah. I was like, oh, that time I was not yet a singer. I was like, so when are you doing a next, next song, Habida? I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been drinking <laughs> Habida's drinks. You know? <laughs> so they think, you know, we look alike somehow. But yeah, for me, mostly... Uh, Maybe the gossip comes in my mother tongue. Someone talks in my mother what tongue. What is your mother I tongue? I know a little bit. Yeah. There's Lua and there's Luya. So I know a little bit. I go to my shags ev like three times in a year. That's why I love this, you know, Mamrenda Manini, because I grew up eating so them. So your mom is half Lua, half Luya. Yes. Yeah. So when, uh, when even uh, I cook those foods, even when people find such foods, you know, they're like, I, how do you know to cook these things? Because I grew up eating them, you know. So, yeah, that's, I think how I experienced it for me. And what about you, Aisha? Uh, initially, when I was born, we moved to Rwanda. So I came back to Kenya. I didn't know Swahili like at all, at all. I didn't know Swahili, I didn't Were know you English. French? Yeah, I was speaking French. Aww. In class, I was number last. For the first time when I went to class, I was yeah. number last. So it was more or less like, mom, okay, I feel like I don't fit in. And is your mom Kenyan or Rwanda? No, my mom is half Italian, half Rwandese. Okay. So we moved here. Yeah, so I was like, mom, I don't understand what these people are saying. And she was like, but you know a bit of Swahili, but you know Rondi Swahili is bad. It's like Congo Swahili. It's not the same. It's not bad, but it's not the same as Kenyan Swahili. So initially, I started picking up the English and Swahili. Then I let go of the language that I initially knew French. Mm. So when people see me for the first time, and they're like, oh, you're from, your mom is Rondi, so you know French. And they start saying, oh, bonjour, Jinini. And I'm like... I don't Aki. speak that anymore. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> and I don't know how I can explain it. But then I don't remember a thing. You can just speak in Swahili or English. I find it interesting. Is your mom mixed race like yourself? Yeah. So when it comes now to the upbringing, because I'm sure probably on this side of the table, with your mother's being primarily black, and have you, ha have you ever had an experience where you're out with your mom? And I see, th I see this with my friends who have mixed race children, whereby they could be in a situation and straight up, they have to start identifying themselves that that really is my child. Oh, um, well, no, I just remember my mom telling me a story because I swear I was born very, very white. I think babies come out like very pale. <laughs> so like in the first couple of days when my mom was walking around holding me, people just assumed that she was the house help. Oh, wow. So I think that was sort of frustrating for her. But generally, people just are like, oh, that's your child. But that's it. And what about yeah. for you, Sabina? Have you had a situation where probably someone thought that your mom was not your mom because uh, the color of your skin is different? Uh, no, I think we look alike. <laughs> you know that she's dark skin, you just know this one, <laughs> they're together. Yeah, so for me, no. And, yeah. and for you, it was easier, obviously, because now they your mom being... They identified her as my sister. Okay, they identify her as your sister. Because yeah. oh. she had this tiny body and she was... We actually looked alike. So we were like, oh, she's your sister. Because they expected, because she's also mixed, her baby is not supposed to be that white. Mm. She's supposed to be a little bit darker, because my dad is dark. So the baby is supposed to be darker and actually look more like the dad, because you're mixed. Mm. Yeah. But then she handled it. And on that point that you've just raised, because we know that Kenyans, the, the street term to referring to mixed race people is 0.5. Mm. And you know, Kenyans usually will make a joke out of it. Like mm. that person is 0.5, only 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So what you're saying is that they expected you to be like a 0.2, mm. not necessarily a 0.5. Yeah. And even amongst yourself, because, and I like that Sam, you keep bringing this out, that there's a lot of diversity. That just because I have one parent who's from one race and another, because with her, it's diversity within diversity, whereby if you actually sat down, and I'm sure you have friends who, if they actually sat down and mapped out all the different cultures that they're actually from, you could find somebody whose mom is half Italian, half Rwandan, the dad is half something, half something, and then when the person is born, they, ha they have like an interesting cocktail of different cultures. Have you experienced that with any of your friends? 
Because, uh, like, for me, I, I, most of my best friends have just been black, Sudanese, and Kenya. You know, like, maybe for, you, you see other pointies, they are somehow together. Like, I have another friend of mine now. She has, like, five pointy friends. But I've never had, like, close, like, best friends at a pointy, even know. So, for me, it was, like, it's different. Because, you see, even for somebody else who's watching us now, why, a white person, we are all the same, me and you. They yeah. call us black. They don't call us even colored. Yeah. Nini. In South yeah. Africa, they'll call you colored. Yeah. Yeah. Here, yeah. they'll call you 0. 0.5, 0. 0.3. So you find even for uh, us within ourselves, the point is, we, we judge or we almost maybe can, you can m be made to feel inferior or, or over. Maybe my hair is not as soft. I went point like in your lap, or in your side, yeah, mama. Or so your eyes. Like when you mix trace, the mm. preference is that you need to look more white than black. Mm. So your hair needs to actually be soft or curly, not necessarily like my mm. nice thick <laughs> afro. Even your eyes, <laughs> even your height, even your weight. So the color of your eyes, the texture of your hair. Hair uh, is a big thing. I remember when I first cut my hair, I shaved it all off. There was like random people who would just ask me like, Ascaris, why are you spoiling your looks? Mm. Like, but that's just a, like a black woman thing. Like m people generally tend to have opinions about our hair, which just <laughs> really <laughs> frustrates me. Mm. Leave us alone, it's our hair, we'll do what we want with it. But yeah, people would just like, random strangers would give you opinions about your hair. Um, yeah, and people talk about like, yeah, hair is a big thing. Especially in the salon, like your hair's too soft to braid, or your hair's tangled. Why is your hair tangled? And yet your hair is so soft. Hair's a big thing. So speaking for of all hair, of because us. we're all girls here, <laughs> do you do your own hair, or is there a specific salon that gets and understands how to do your hair? Well, I think the natural hair movement is amazing. Like it's changed everything. Um, but I go to a barber because my hair's pretty short and stays short most of the time, and then I get braids. Just, yeah. What about you, Aisha? I had long hair, then I cut it off because it's, it's boring, it's typical. Like, everyone is wearing wigs, everyone wants to have long hair. Everyone's like, oh my God, why did you cut your hair? Yeah. If I had your hair, oh my God, it mm. will be on my back, it will be yeah. CG, I'll be doing more. business. You know, you know they, they chop <laughs> that off and they yeah. make it into the wigs and the weaves that... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> I'll be doing something else. Or when you go to a saloon and you want to be braided and they're like, yeah. oh, your hair is too soft. Or they charge you t double or triple because your hair is soft. And they're like, oh, it's too much work. I can't, I won't charge you the same as this one because when I start braiding this one, it will be so soft. much, yeah. it's easier for yeah. me yeah. to braid her. Yeah, even faster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I pay like 500 bob, for example, 500 bob, and someone else pays 200 bob, and in one week, my hair will be out. Mm -hmm. Does it even make sense? Yeah. So I decided to chop, to chop off my hair. After that, I started embracing my curly hair, because growing up, I felt like I needed to have straight hair, because I was actually, I'm lighter than everyone else, like everyone is usually like, oh, pointy, mzungu, and my mom's hair was straighter than mine, so mine was curly, so curly that I didn't want it to stay like that. I didn't like it when it was poofy and curly. I wanted it to be straightened all the time. So when I grew up and I shaved off my hair, I had the this hairstyle that people had from Kitambo, the one where I used to shave off here. Then the you mohawk. have, yeah, the mohawk yeah. there. I, I have that underneath here. Yeah, <laughs> <the mohawk. laughs> so it looks nice when you have curly yeah. hair. Then I started outgrowing my hair and they started embracing the curly hair. Like everyone is usually like, they put their hair in a band, then they put this wig that they usually buy. Yeah. So I'm like, I can actually do that with my own hair. I don't mm. need to have so straight hair. So you do it hair. yourself at home? Yeah, at home. Is it yeah. done? Now you've mentioned something, which for me, I just want to get your perspective on this. Cause I'm sure for a lot of people, people when they see you, at first you're a 0.5, or for some, you just straight up white because of the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in yeah. Kenya, usually the bias is that white people are rich. Yeah. yeah. That you have a lot of money. So anywhere we anywhere you go, if she and I walked into a store and I asked for the price of something, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be told five hundred. She's probably gonna be told five thousand Kenya shillings. Have you experienced that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's very frustrating. Um and it, um I don't know how much you know about me, but like 
I was very clinically depressed for over four years. And last year I started a fundraiser um, because I was in huge amounts of debt. And one of my greatest worries was that people would say, why is this pointy asking for money from us? And yet people actually came forward and gave money. And I was it was a huge concern of mine that people would just judge me and be like, oh, she's mixed race, she must have money. And yet, I, I mean, we grew up I grew up with basically nothing. Like my mom like fought to get me through school, through bursaries, scholarships, friends helping with school fees. Like, so I grew up poor basically, but the accent and the color of my skin is very confusing. So it makes it really difficult for people to put you in a box, which frustrates them. Because people are like, why you take a border border? Why you take a matatu? Like there's always this like con like misconception. They assume you should be driving. Yeah. You should be living in Karen yeah. or Runda or one of those you know yeah. high end neighborhoods. Mm. Yeah. And what about for you, Sabina? I, you know, I was laughing when you first said that because I remember this one time I was in Rongai. Then they were saying like tate 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 you know tate bo tate I held that cloth I one fifty one fifty one I was like what the place changed like five like, times <laughs> so yeah I see and and you know even the person is looking at you like why are you in Rongai because me I go to the market kabisa I go buy my vegetables and so I'm just like the other Kenyan there are times I have not had rent there's yeah. times I did not have school fees for my child even not even long ago even this year think you are a celebrity <laughs> yeah. why why are you in a matatu and for me I thank God because I go I have God because I don't care about anything I'm content in my life I have to be real I can't I can't maybe uh, you take can't it. fake it yeah, I can't yeah, fake because it because at the end of the day nitajinyima me don't tell me to make someone else happy so mm. when I don't have I don't have and even sometimes on on Instagram I say yeah I don't have because you know in social media we 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 have this thing if I put this bottle a, a glass of water here and just take a picture and just say chilling you know someone will be so depressed somewhere and it's just water it's you can get it from your tap take the same glass at home take a picture so uh, I think for me it's it's never an issue about what someone thinks of me but I get that people see that. For me, even going to a, I went to a public school, primary school, uh, high school. I went to a good school, a girl school. But I didn't go to those British system, you know. And even my daughter herself is not in those schools, even though she's she's also point. She's only two point five. I mean, you know, <laughs> she's a point yeah, something. Point something. <laughs> I'm a ponya kidogo. But you see, yeah, I think the money issue is is so sad because even even your efforts, if you succeed in something in your career, like when, even when I was a news anchor. Some people in the office would just be like, mm, I'm a was ni pointy. But no, I put a lot of hard work. You don't know how much. I work hard even more than the other person. So just to prove to the people that I deserve it. So yeah, even as an actress, sometimes maybe in an idea kuna, kuna role, I will mm. get because one attack a pointy specifically. Now that's specific. But for anything else, I have to audition as the other black person. You still have to hustle mm. and work just as hard. Yeah. And what about for you, Aisha? What has been your experience with that? People assuming outside out, outside of the salon, where else do they assume that ah we are corner dollars? How <laughs> many euros? Mm. <laughs> Tumba mostly. Because <laughs> I personally don't buy anything from sh stores. I feel like mtumbas are underrated. You know, sisi wale tunenaga latua, aka toy market. Tunasemaga nyinyi ndo muliaribu soko. You know? Like this uh, mixed dress people and the whites who go and shop, you're like, waliaribu well, soko. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, just that big. first line. You have yeah, to go inside. inside and then like, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> After to your family yeah. on the inside. <laughs> yeah. That's where I usually go. <laughs> so it's like a hundred trousers as a trousers are 100 bob, t-shirts are 20 bob. Oh, you need to show me your trousers are 100 bob. <laughs> Imagine inside there, yeah. like really inside yeah. there, you get them for 100 bob. So people usually assume, oh, pointy, unafanya nini? As you mm. know, are you buying these clothes? Mm. And I'm like, hey, mimi ni maskini kama wewe. Mm. Or let's, I live in Kaskari, on the other side. So I usually pass through Gidurai. And most of the times, Gidurai, there's a big market. So I usually stop by there. And before you connect, I usually stop by there. So everyone is usually pulling my hand. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, they want to touch you. Yeah, because yeah. they feel like if they hold you and they have a grip of you, you'll give them attention and you look at whatever they're selling. Mm. I'm sure like, no, I'm not interested in whatever you're selling. So nowadays they know, no one usually touches me. And they're like, oh, oh, sister, I'm sure. We are an ajake and an attacker. And when I come there and some, I know something is 300 bob, let's say, you know, in Gikombal get something at 200 bob and you sell it to me at 500. Mm -hmm. I'm sure like, 
Bonu na nibeba hivi. Let me tell you another secret I have. Eh? This is a tool that works magic. But usually me I usually say ah, come and try. I mean go na to 50. Utachukua mo chukui. Step out. But I got another better trick. I go with a friend of mine who's dark skin. Naambia unaonaje to kwa blue? Na uulize. Mimi niko hapo mbele. Alafu anauliza alafu mimi nakuja. There's a day that happened to me in Meru. I was I saw a nice doll. 2500 aka doll. I was told yani 2500 na hata si duka ni yani ile nje supermarket hivyo kahoka. Ngambia rafiki yangu end up unaona kale kadole ka pink nini? Yes. I got it for like 1000. Oh wow. That's yeah. like again. So, d- so she bought it but you know it's like it's yeah. a hassle. Yeah. <laughs> but this thing of getting grabbed really disturbs me and it so, happens like some mostly in town like below like river road like after Koja even at Koja when you're getting a matatu oh, guys yeah, tend matatu to sana, sana. Get, they they hold you and then once i was walking on i was trying to cross um Waiyaki way and a guy leant out of the matatu and tried to back slap me like it's the randomest thing when people mm. try and like they feel like they have a right to your body mm. and they just they're grabbing you but i don't know if that's all women i think that happens to all women, women like yeah. generally yeah. Yeah. for you probably it's a yeah. bit more it's it's you a bit more because of your mm. ca- color okay. of your skin so they yeah. think that because you're not from around here yeah like let me try and get your attention or take advantage either you don't know the, the rate so i'm going to charge yeah. you more than the next person yeah. now remember that you can join the conversation let me know what your comments and feedback are on today's topic what do you think about what the ladies have shared on the table when it comes to growing up as mixed race because the reality is that they're kenyans just like you and i they're struggling just like you and i to earn a living to put food on the table to pay rent so get on that hashtag real talk with tamima we'll be right back after this break Welcome back to the round table. Now remember this is where we leave it on the table. Ladies, help me wrap this table. We are leaving it on the table. So, <laughs> and you know, I've learned a lot from this conversation because this I I didn't realize it, but <laughs> like a lot of Kenyans, there's some biases that I had and I cannot tell you that assumption what we were just talking about earlier. The thing about finances, for a lot of Kenyans they assume everything we've talked about, you have money, you know, you're going to one of those schools, like you have more privilege like like what she brought up because of the color of my skin, all my achievements are sort of like zinakanyagiwa kwa sababu kila mtu anaona ah she was there because she comes from a good background or she's well connected. Now, I want us to I want us to talk about dating and relationships. So what has that been experience been like for you? Let's start with you Aisha. My dating experience is actually boring because I've dated <laughs> one <is> person. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? Why have you only dated one person? I felt like he understood me. He didn't mm-hmm. like me for my color. He didn't like me f- as in he it's as if he doesn't even see that I'm light skinned. So he if saw Aisha. He saw Aisha for who I work. I actually um and he doesn't even when we're walking around and people are like, "Oh, pointy mzungu." He doesn't even notice they're actually talking about me. <laughs> He continues working and he doesn't remember that I'm the one who is being bothered. Mm. So I have to stay by his side to walk at the same pace that he is cuz usually like, don't even pay attention to them. But I'm, sh- nini. I'm sure that some young gentleman and probably even someone watching right now is like, "Hey Tamima, so ni siku mimi na Aisha pale." But so what are some of those negative experiences you had that probably put you off dating altogether? Cuz usually people usually assume that they look good wi- when they're with you. That's the first thing. Everyone initially assumes, oh, the mrembo, akona rangi, so light, light skin. Light skin. Mm-hmm. Then they usually like you're not like white, you know, white usually don't have a big ass or big boobs. You're usually like there and I don't have white uh, a white body and I don't, I don't have like a big body. I'm just there. So you're like the best of both worlds. Ka laptop, ka <laughs> figure check. <laughs> something of this and they shall like oh when he says yangu and they grab you and they like oh when he says yangu na your rangi yako kwanza mtoto and uh, at times I'm shall like you have to respect me I'm someone's mom mm. don't even go there like I have boundaries you're not supposed to treat me like that just because I'm a, I'm light skinned and I'm pretty it doesn't mean that you, you can have your way or some of them are like unazongea na mtu kama mimi kweli and I'm like my husband is dark He, he looks like you just like you there's no difference between you and him but then they don't respect you as much because they feel like ah if any guy wants you they can get you and nowadays because of these sponsor things and all that they usually like 
Uyo ikosa na indianga tuwa to my sponsor so that they can treat her right because she's expensive. So that's the other perception that yeah. you only date rich. Yeah. That if you're mixed race, you can either date someone who's very rich, if he's black, he's very rich, or either you're dating white, correct? Mm. And But you, right now, you're in a relationship with someone who is Meru and you have a child. Yeah. And you loved him because he saw the real Aisha. Yeah. What about you, Sabina? For me, dating has been a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Single and searching. <laughs> Single, I don't know if I'm searching anymore. <laughs> so so for why me, is it a problem? <laughs> it's like, I don't know if it's about the color of the skin. Because, you know, like you said, like maybe somebody touched her just because she was a woman, not because mm. of the color of her skin. Mm. But if I, if I put it maybe in terms of that uh, as a perspective of it also, uh, there's that thing of, yes, people think of you like, like it's like you're different. Maybe not even you're a good person, but you'll capture that person's attention. Even at home, where I grew up, Topanga, if anyone has done anything, it will be hard to find them. But me, I don't have anything to do with me. I don't have you see. So uh, I think because of that, it, it, it's an advantage to stand out, but also it's a disadvantage because someone, again, can date you, want to date you just for the experience. Mm. When you may say, I'm a dem pointy. And then also there's the aspect of other women treating you like you're there to steal their men. So know? other women are insecure yeah. around you. And yeah. I, it's, I have done nothing, talked not, nothing to a guy, but just that person hates you because... Because now men are the want light skinned people. And and it's it's sad because even for me, someone can date me maybe because I've been on TV or I'm a pointy, and then they come to realize, eh, who dem to nika dem mungin. Mm. You know, she just has issues like she anybody else. She just needs attention not like any other guy. You know, and she then they like the saying Chotara are drama, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so everyone has their own perspective. But for me, yeah, maybe too I've not gotten the right person, so I don't know if it's also because of uh, someone wanting to be with me because of my color. That one time will tell, yeah. But I think now God has given me the, the wisdom to, to, to... But you have a child. Yes. And your child is b via... Um, uh, the father of my child is black, dark skin, very dark skin. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so for me, it was, I, I've dated only black people. I remember, I think, Kitambo Sana, I kissed a white man. It was so weird. <laughs> but I think it was just a bad kiss. <laughs> but yeah, but I've not dated white men because also my black friends, they say white men like skinny, dark mm. cheeks. So everyone has a stereotype. Yeah. But it's just that I've not gotten the right person. In fact, I think I want an Indian now. So, <laughs> I saw you nodding a lot, Sam, the statement that she just made, that you kind of feel like in Kenya also, like, white men tend to prefer the African Kenyan girls, like black Kenyan girls, as opposed to mixed race women. Yeah, like, I mean, I think as an adult, I have not dated a white man. And I think it's because I'm very, like, my body is very African. I have a big ass, I have big boobs, I have a lot of curves, I have thighs for days, there's no <laughs> gap in between. <laughs> so I, like, I don't think I fit, like, that sort of, like, stereotype. That mold. That yeah. mold, yeah. Uh, so, it, yeah, so that's a, a but I, but for me, it's never really, like, whoever I am attracted to. And dating in Nairobi, first of all, is hard. Mm, Let's yeah. just put it on the table. You're so lucky you found someone. <laughs> but generally, dating in Nairobi yeah. is hard. Um, but, like, I, it's never really, it's never been about color. But I generally have dated black men. But it was, yeah, it was never a color thing. And I don't think they were attracted to me because of my color. It's never been an issue or a topic or something that's been brought up. Um, it's just been a matter of like who I get on well with and who I'm compatible with. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think, and yeah, and there is that stereotype that it tends to be like white men with like tall skinny women. And, and weirdly enough, like, so I don't know if you guys get asked this, but I often get asked, who's white, who's black, your mom or your dad? And then last year, someone told me, do you know why people ask you that? It's because if you say that your mom is black, people assume that your mom was a prostitute. Mm. And I, that like blew my mind. So it's a thing also yeah. about attitudes. Like why do people assume that? We're, and, and it's true because I have friends who are married to white men. And usually that's a perception. She's only with him because of money. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's so, like, it's, it's so, it's so, 
it's, 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 so very, de- it's so degrading. It's very backward. <laughs> it's so degrading of women. Yeah. And I think also, like, I hope it's changing because we were, I think we were born in the 80s. Maybe not you. Mm. Okay, but like <laughs> in the 80s and now there's a whole other generation yeah. of like more 0.5 people who will have a different upbringing. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I hope it'll change. But like that, that notion, like, and I guess because of like I'm in my 30s and yeah, I, I can only imagine what my mum went through um, dating a white man, even though like she was just, she was probably even better educated than him. You know, all of those things sort of, I don't know that that is like it's been mm-hmm. the most shocking. Sabina, thing you had something to mm-hmm. add to that? It, it's yeah, it must me because I grew up in Mombasa. They think maybe she well, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then also it's 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 fuels that notion more because I think many pointees have single parents, either for yeah. one reason or another. Maybe the father died. Like for me, my father died. Um, someone else, maybe the father left. So mm. one even more. So it pushes that issue. narrative that yeah. Ma- yeah. mama ndio alikuwa ameenda kutafuta mm. a white man. Yeah. Okay. And probably now talking about raising children because you mentioned that at least for your child because you've uh, you've both settled down. You settled down with black Kenyan mm. so your child is a point two, like you said it yourself yeah. mm. so do you find that now perhaps your child has to explain why mommy looks a certain type of way yeah people will most probably ask her and my hair texture is a bit different from hers so everyone will be like is that your mom why don't you guys look alike mm. so I feel like I have to prepare her in advance and show her that me and her are the same person She's mine. Nothing will change that. Just because we look different, it doesn't mean that she's any different from me. And just because she looks different from her other classmates or other children who she plays with, it doesn't mean that she's any better. She's not here and they're here. Mm. They're all on the same level. Like, I want to raise her up in a way that she understands that we are all human. We are all equal. It doesn't matter. No one should ask you which race are you. I'm human. I live on earth. Mm. <laughs> I, I eat whatever you eat. In Kenyan. Yeah, and, and I live in Kenya. Yeah. I'm African. It doesn't matter. Even if she goes to somewhere else, let's say states or somewhere else, she's also human. No one should ask her. No one should intimidate her and ask mm. her, you're supposed to, oh, where are you from? You're Kenyan. I had this and this about Kenyans. I had this and this about Africa. No one should tell her that. Like, no one should limit her just because of her color or who Absolutely. she is. And what about for you, Sabina? Because you raise also, you say point? <laughs> Apple two point something. I'm at seven two zero because I got two, I got normal two. Got so a, does she have to Kenya. explain why mom looks a certain way? No, I don't think so. And also for me, Nikona Uswaili mob. So she doesn't feel at a at a minimum white or anything. So uh, I think for me, what Nigependa kum instill more are the morals. What and the Christian way, you know, how to show other people the love of God. But I feel also I would like her to travel, you know, to see I in the Somali or no Somali to go to. Like when I when I go to SA, people think, uh, especially Cape Town, they think I'm a colored. You know, mm. they speak to me in Africans. I'm like, oh my Jesus, you know. But also there's the aspect of uh, you see, I'm I'm for her. She settled down for me. I, I I will get probably another person. Maybe they may be white. Her sister or brother may be colored. You know, maybe maybe a So you say they may be white. So you're at a place where now you're saying, I want to date white. Yeah, I can date white. If okay. more on the many pair, yes. In fact, I should date white, so I try something <laughs> else, you know. And and also there's the aspect of, you see, like for me, my there's something important, maybe when you visited the other parents. For me, my mother, when she went to my father's family, she, she encountered racism. And that affects me now, because when my father died, now how do I get in touch with my uncle who was racist to my mother? My mother would be like, oh, my our father died, you know. The one who loved you was your grandmother. So I used to be close to my grandmother, then she also died. So the next person is the uncle and my cousins. But now my mother would not be interested because of how he treated her. Mm. So that leaves me in a point where, okay, I want to know my un- un- uh, cousins, but then my uncle was mean to my mom. So kuna your dynamic pay an important could you but I know you can't you can't cover all this in one day. It's something you have to just live in life to encounter. Yeah, but mm. uh, but the net effect of that is that you identify now more with your mother's culture yeah. mm. because you don't feel like you have access to your dad's larger extended family. Yeah, because also people say you know now you can get dual citizenship. I'm like, okay, if I what am I going to do in that country? You know, oh yeah, there's the benefits, but I'm like I have everything. My purpose is here, so Maybe maybe for something else to, to travel without paying for visa. <laughs> but I feel like I don't have that. Yeah. What, Even, ab- mm. what about for you, Sam? Have you tried reaching out to 
your dad's side of the family maybe um yes and no it's complicated because my dad left with someone else when i was seven so he has other families do you stay in touch with him no i haven't seen him in i don't know 25 years um so i mean so it's a very different situation in that he really had no contact in my life. He didn't want me to, he didn't want me, basically. Um, and he chose to start another family. And so I, I have no real connection with anybody in his family. Um, so even though my parents were together for 16 years, um, I don't think my dad wanted me as a child. Like he just didn't want me. He showed me love, I think. But I just think that's not a product of being biracial. I think just, that happens some in most men families. are men yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some people are not good parents or can't yeah. handle the responsibility so i don't have any connection to that side of the family i um so it's really con like for a long time it was very confusing i think in my late 20s maybe when i had like like the majority of my friends were white because I'd gone to school with them. But then when they sort of came back from university abroad, I sort of felt like I had very little in common with them because mm -hmm. having gone to University of Nairobi opened up my eyes to what Kenya could be. And I was just like my, the way I viewed the world was so different. It felt like I lived in a completely different paradigm to them. So that was sort of the biggest transition in my life. And so now my friends, they're multicultural, but it's such a different makeup of the people I went to school with. So I sort of feel like I don't have family on my dad's side. Family on my mum's side have their own issues. So it's really just me and my mum. And then I have my chosen family. So, yeah, I, I, I just... It's complicated it, it, on that side. Yeah, family is yeah. just complicated. I think all families are complicated. And to be honest, my father was just a bad father. And, he, and I think he would have been a bad father whatever color he was. He just happened to be white. Yeah. <laughs> and what about for you, Aisha? Yeah. What about for you? Do you have any contact? Have you yeah. had that conversation with your mom? My mom passed away, mm -hmm. so I have contact with my my mom's side of the family. But then all families have issues, <laughs> and um, I got to a point where I wanted to be by myself, especially when I got pregnant. I wanted for my kid to be in a happy environment. I don't want my kid to be exposed to any negativity or anything of the sort. So I want it's me. I've started my own tree. But do you have a relationship um, with your dad? Ah, with my dad, yeah, I have a close yeah. relationship. But then he's also not clo so close with his side. As in, you are not brought up. We are not the kind of family who went for family gatherings. At ECG, this weekend, you are going to Shags. I was not raised like that. I was mm -hmm. basically raised, it's me, mom, dad. Mm -hmm. If family visits, they, fi they visit once in a while. We visit them once in a while. But then apart from that, we don't have like the family gatherings and all that. Okay. Yeah. So there can be some bit of isolation because it starts from... Either on either side, the extended family doesn't support your parents being together, and then you know my heart uh, my heart goes out to her because uh, for me also my my daughter, the father of my child left me at some point. Yeah, you abandoned us. So I, I when I when you talk, you you make me see my daughter. Like, oh my mm. God, I'm getting emotional. It worries you. Yeah. yeah. So no, I feel. No, but don't be worried. No, I'm but not worried, but I'm like I see my daughter, so I'm like, what yeah. do I tell you? You know, like you you are worthy. It's not about you. It's no, not so, yeah. and and I absolutely know that now. Mm. I think I struggled when I was younger. Like I felt like what if my like kids just feel that way. Yeah. But what if I did something wrong? Mm. But that's why I just know like he obviously couldn't handle the responsibility. And this is because I've had therapy, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very grown up of you to yeah, admit and like, realize that his decisions had nothing to do with me. Yeah, He failed where yeah. ideally he should have been a father or a husband, but that yeah. has nothing to do with how I see myself yeah. or how I mm. equate my own personal self-worth. Yeah. Now, remember, this is the round table. <laughs> We've left it on the table. I yeah. like this. Huh? <laughs> so Sabina getting emotional here. Oh, you you can make me cry. On this show. <laughs> Your daughter's going to be like president or something. Absolutely. Yeah, don't worry about her. <laughs> well, on that note, uh, we'll be on that note, we'll be winding up today's topic. Thank you so much for staying with us. Until next time, this has been the round table, and I am Tamima. See you next time. Round the table, guys. <laughs>
Special thanks to E Plus for medic and ambulance services.